Hello, welcome back. Uh, still Wednesday, May the 8th. My guest in this segment is Philip Simons. He's written a book called Surviving Civilization's Collapse with Hope, Love, and a Little Humor. So it sounds like a great title and an important book, Surviving Civilization's Collapse. Um, so, Philip, I guess I could ask what is the book about, but I guess we know from the title. <laughs> <laughs> well, in part, yes. <laughs> yeah. Why did you write it? Because um, our present civilization is in trouble, as we know from all the talk about climate change. But uh, climate change is not the only problem we're facing. Uh, back in 1992, the authors of the book that's well known by the name of um, uh, Beyond, uh, sorry, uh, the, the Limits to Growth. Limits to Growth, yes. Limits to Growth, right, is well known. They wrote a second book in 1992 because the first book wasn't a great success. There were some problems with it. The 1992 book was a much more thorough study with a, a world model. And they looked at different scenarios of uh, what would happen if we did nothing, the way things were going, and um, identifying some of the problems. If we were to solve, if we were to look at these problems one at a time and solve them, uh, what would happen then? What they found was that if we did nothing, we would be in a mess by about the year 2030, which incidentally is about the date that the International Panel on uh, uh, Climate Change has, has come up with. And this was long before there was much talk about uh, climate change. And then they found that uh, if we were to just solve one problem at a time, we were still going to be in a mess. That wasn't going to help. We had to do everything at once. That was one of the main lessons they took away from that. So I was very interested in that. And then later on, I came across a book called Collapse by Jared Diamond, uh, which looked at why some previous civilizations collapsed and why others survived, and the lessons that could be learned from that. I found it a fascinating book, but it's far over 500 pages long, and the people who should read it are not going to. Uh, the people who should read it are politicians, political scientists, and the general public because there's a lot of excellent information in it. I found it fascinating. So I decided that what I needed to do was to write a short book that summarized the main, the, some of the stories, a few of the stories from Jared Diamond's collapse, and take the lessons from that and apply them to our situation today. Okay, your book is very short. It's only... It's uh, 65 pages, okay, I Okay, 65 pages. I've kept it short on purpose. It very, should very be readable idea. in an afternoon. It's also... Uh, in a, ch a chatty sort of style, so it's easy to read. And there's, if you don't read well, there's lots of pictures as well. So, <laughs> so what can we learn? Well, one of the history. things that um, uh, Diamond found out was that uh, the, the, from the civ civ civilizations he looked at was that uh, the decisions that were made, obviously, were what was important. And they could be made in two ways, from the bottom up, by governments from the bottom up, or from the top down. And, uh, of course, our democracy is a very sort of happy combination of both of those. Uh, so democracy is one of the most important things to reach in, uh, good, correct decisions for preserving and surviving our civilization. I agree 100%. <laughs> and it's too bad we don't have any democracy here Well, in that's the other thing. Yeah. And that's the first point that comes up. Uh, one of the important things we've got to do is strengthen our democracy. And there are various things. I go into a few of them in the book. Um, I keep it short. Can you mention? Yes, of course. Um, one of the first ones is proportional representation. We've been working at that for some time. Uh, so far, uh, without success. But sooner or later, uh, I'm sure we, it will come in. Because it, every, every um, citizen's assembly or commission or committee that studied it has, has come up with a recommendation that it's something we should adopt. And it's just the political um, people who don't want it and so far have managed to stymie the votes. And, of course, uh, the referendums that followed. Um, um, a lot of uh, information was, was incorrect. And a lot of the people just didn't understand what was being asked. Yeah, I would agree with you that proportional representation gives people more power and so it's more democratic. Besides that, what other steps can we take? 
Well, um, I think one of the things that, that we've got to look into is the power of corporations to lobby governments. Uh, that's a big one. And um, the power of the uh, pri um, Prime Minister's office, the PMO, yes. is another one that uh, needs uh, some correction. There are a lot of things that can be done. Elizabeth May has been very good at, at uh, listing the items that could be done to improve democracy and uh, make our, our governments work better. Yeah, uh, to me, there's nothing more important than that uh, because I really think it would pay off for all of us. I think all of us, except for the 1% of the 1%, would get a lot more of what we want if we had a little more democracy. Um, yeah. The title of your book suggests a collapse of our civilization is inevitable. Um, do you think that's where we're going? Well, um, I'm forever an optimist, but um, the signs are not good. No, no, no. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Meadows uh, um, et al. book, uh, Beyond the Limits, did these uh, computer simulations. And the simulation where we do nothing, which is what we've been doing, uh, all, the, all the, the lines that the, the computer produces, have, we've followed them almost exactly. It's, it's amazing how well the predictions have been coming true as we go forward, uh, which is very, very worrying. So, uh, and I'm a biologist, and I know that populations cannot go on growing forever. And our populations by the year 2030, 40 are going to be about 9 billion. That's unsustainable. And unless we've taken steps to do something about it, nature will do it for us. And that's where I really get worried. There's always something that can, can be done. Can be done. I think of what we're the area, the era we're going into is being something like a world war, where um, when the airplanes were coming over from Germany or from Britain and the other direction, um, people knew that they would get killed. There was going to be some deaths. They didn't sit and do nothing. They built air raid shelters. They moved to places where there was going to be less bombing. There's always something we can do. So dire as the situation is, that's where the hope comes in. Hope, love, and a little humor. The hope is that uh, we can finally move and do something to prevent the uh, fiery crash that uh, we seem to be headed for into what I like to think of as going over the precipice with parachutes. We're going to land at the bottom one way or another, but we can land there more softly or we can land there with a thump. And uh, if, we, if we make the correct decisions when we land, uh, we'll have seen not the catastrophes that we could otherwise have seen, but our population will have to come down to something like three or four billion rather than uh, the nine billion it is going to be at in 2030. And certainly we can reduce our technology and our use of cars and everything and uh, take a little bit of a load off the planet in that way. I mean, there's so much we can do. There is. And, and probably end up having better lives and happier lives for it. Technology is a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, one of the, the when the um, Industrial Revolution came along, it uh, improved the lives of everyone to the point where populations began to increase. Medicine got better. And it's been, as a result, a part of the cause of our present problems. And you look at things like um, Silent Springs, uh, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring and the use of pesticides, which have improved our agricultural output to some extent, but caused all kinds of other problems. Uh, every technology that comes along, I think, needs to be looked at extremely carefully. Some of them are very useful, but there are always side effects that we need to be careful about. And of course, we should have been doing that for the last 10,000 years, yes. but especially in the last 100 years when the technology, I mean, it, it's like there is no limit. Just whatever you can imagine, yeah, build it, do it, and who cares? I mean, destroy the planet, doesn't matter. Let's have leaf blowers, you know, yeah. we've got to have them. Or you see people, you know, washing their sidewalks with these... Uh, wa Power washers. Power yeah. washers. I yes, mean, I know. <laughs> Can we not think of a better way to waste our water? Oh, and it I'm doesn't sure even work. <laughs> Somebody, you know, if you have a brush, you can yes. do it. Yeah. Ah. Um, so what can we do to survive? Well, make the right decisions. Um, we've mentioned uh, strengthening democracy. That's one thing. Yes. Uh, another thing that we need to do uh, is to 
uh, reduce the, the um, re reduce the difference in um, in um, uh, income. Uh, income. That's right. Thank uh, you. I'm yes. looking for the words. Uh, yes. Get uh, reduce the disparity in wealth. Yes, that would make such a difference to our it society. It makes an enormous difference to the culture. Yes, and uh, we would have a much better culture if we had more or less disparity in wealth than we have at the present time. I read a book about it once, which you may have also read, called uh, The Spirit Level. Yes. Did you? I reference that in, the, in, in my book. Yeah. There. Basically, it says that if you just reduce income inequality from where it is now in Canada to something like this, almost everything in the society changes for the better. It's amazing. That's right. It is amazing. It's, it's, uh, and we're going in the other direction. We're going in the other direction, both there and with democracy. But so. we're only going in the other direction because the people who run, run the country want us to. Yes. I That's mean, true. we could just as easily move in, in better directions. That's right. Yeah, and let's hope we do. So those, as far as I'm concerned, are the two most important things we can do. And then, because we have to tackle everything at once, we should get everybody working on all the other problems that exist, climate change being an enormous and complex and very, very important one, but there are other things as well. Water supply, food supply, uh, distribution of medicine, education. Uh, population control is a huge problem. One of the best ways of, uh, of, of, of reducing our population, getting our, the number of children reduced, is the education of young women uh, and the ac access to birth control methods. Uh, and that um, that would be uh, an enormous uh, of, of more enormous assi assistance as well. Um, here in BC or here in Victoria, what are some things we could do to move us in the right in right directions? Like uh, we've got Site C, we've got LNG, <laughs> uh, you know. Yes. Well, I think generally fisheries make people more aware of problem in general and not just climate change yes not but just all the other change. things as well uh, it's very difficult to get people interested in government and democracy they sort of roll their eyes when they hear about it and uh, uh, it's if not not of great interest to many people I, I don't know what we can do about that because as you've said uh, and as I say it's one of the most important things we have to tackle and make better I'm not sure how we do that except through education I think it's it's wonderful that the uh, the, our youth nowadays have suddenly realized that things are not happening the way they should. And uh, what is it? Once a month, they come out and uh, uh, with a big uh, strike. Uh, big strike. Yes, that's right. That's and bring attention to the to the matter. So yes. far, yes. government is not doing anything. But uh, well, you know, maybe we need a ministry of democracy and democratic education, <laughs> and uh, and start. I mean, why not? You know, well, I hadn't thought really of that, but it's a possibility. Anything, anything to help uh, get our, uh, strengthen yeah, yeah, our yeah, democracy yeah, yeah. would be, would be. And of course, it would be nice if our politicians, who are supposed to represent us, came and asked us once in a while what we want, because there you start having democracy. Just ask us what we want. Well, it's not that difficult. That's true. No, it's not that difficult. Um, we do have um, uh, forums every now and then. Op uh, what do they call them? Open uh, houses. Open houses. That's right. Yes. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. They're hard to run, and uh, you get a few people with their yeah. questions. and, yeah. and uh, yeah. Especially government over and over. Philip, we're out of time. Surviving <laughs> Civilization's Collapse with Hope, Love, and a Little Humor. It sounds like a great book. I'm going to read it. Thank you very much. Thank you for writing the book. Yeah. You're welcome. And thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.